Good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to our webinar workshop this Tuesday morning. We appreciate you waking up and spending time with us, just uh, taking a small part of your day. My name is Brian Griffin, a marketing assistant here at Messer Financial Group. Many of you are already familiar with Messer, but in case you don't know, we are an FMO located in Mint Hill, North Carolina. We started with just two agents and now serving 20,000 plus agents across 40 states and still growing. Today, we'll be looking at Cigna's total care product. Now, Cigna has managed to continue to maintain a very personal feel with clients, all while growing into a global behemoth in the healthcare space. Their brand is recognizable all over the world, and actually this makes it easier when we're talking to our clients because you don't have to sell the company and the product to the client. They already know who Cigna is. So today, we're lucky to have Robert Lawson Jr., a broker sales manager with Cigna with us. He's been in the Medicare space for 11 years, two years as a captive agent, seven as an independent agent, and going on two with Cigna. So he knows what it takes to build a good sized book of business in the DSNIP market. And he's gonna share some strategies and product knowledge with us today. So before we get started, a few housekeeping rules. Uh, we're gonna hold all questions till the end of the presentation. If you do have questions, just type in the box on the right hand side of your screen and we'll get to as many as we can at the conclusion of the presentation. So now without any further delay, Mr. Robert Lawson Jr. Great, thank you, <clears throat> Brian. Man, that was an awesome introduction. I hope I uh, can live up to uh, that, all the that you mentioned there, appreciate it. <clears throat> but good morning, everybody. I wanna thank you for uh, joining uh, us this morning to learn about <clears throat> this unique product in the marketplace. Uh, this doesn't take long, but I believe you'll you'll go away fr from here learning about a product that you can sell year round, and uh, hopefully um, find a little niche market. And when I go through some of these uh, slides and some of the training, and teach a little bit about product knowledge, and also teach you about some of the process. But before I get into that, let me do. Uh, Brian did a good job introducing myself. I'll kind of touch on a few things here. Um, he asked me before we got on, if I go by Robert or if I go by Bob or Bobby, quick story there. I, uh, I do go by Robert. Uh, I uh, grew up in a family where there was lots of Bobbies and uh, lots of Bobs. So uh, I stuck with that, uh, the name Robert. So I do have 20 years in the health insurance uh, you know, space. Uh, he mentioned everything from customer service to account management. I'll just highlight this area here, the independent agent. During my time as an independent agent in Pennsylvania, I built a book of business of over 300 people, and I mainly did that <clears throat> with duals and LIS and partials, which that's what we're really, you know, <clears throat> gearing this conversation towards. Uh, so I'm, I got a lot of experience with grassroots efforts and food pantries and things like that. <clears throat> so bring a lot of knowledge and a lot of comfort in this area. So I'm very uh, comfortable talking about it. I've been married for 28 years. This upcoming June to my lovely wife, Maricela, I've got five uh, amazing children and now a new son-in-law. Uh, my da oldest daughter, uh, who was 23, got married about a year ago. And uh, we do have one amazing dog, Winnie. She's a soft-coated Wheaton Terrier. And a little bit about me as far as a fun fact, uh, I've lived in six different states. I was born and raised in California, kind of the Central Valley, if you're familiar with Fresno. And then I uh, was stationed in the uh, infantry in the United States Army in Schofield Barracks, Hawaii for three and a half years, and then served in the New York National Guard way upstate, close to Canada for two years, and then served in the Virginia National Guard um, and finished up my eight years total uh, in the military. And then I moved to Pennsylvania, and that's where we started our family, had all five of our children there, lived there for about 21 years. And then about almost three years ago, this coming June, uh, we moved to North Carolina. And we love it here. We love the weather. We're both West Coasters. My wife is uh, Tucson, Arizona. Of course, I'm from California. I think eventually we knew we would get back into something that was a little more palatable as far as weather. And uh, so we're excited to, to definitely be here. But enough about, or, uh, or I wanted to show you one last thing. Look, this is a little picture of my family. And we just live here locally in Mooresville, except for my 
my daughter and her new husband, Chris, live in, uh, in uh, Pennsylvania, in Harrisburg. So that's a good look at my family. All right, a little bit before we get into the um, presentation, I, I wanna recognize, because I haven't had a chance to really do this, I wanna recognize AEP recognition for Messer Financial. Um, you guys really, uh, as far as an agency, blew it out of the water uh, during AEP. And th there's, I don't like leaving out people because there's a lot of agents I could list here, but I did wanna list uh, some of the top agents during AEP that really came through for us and uh, just did a tremendous job. And I'll just put up the, the numbers. And again, these numbers, aren't official numbers, but they're pretty close to what they did during AEP. And I just wanna recognize these, uh, I think what these six people here. Uh, so Yas Firakawa did 53 apps, Ray, Ray Council from SLP did 61, Gaden Truluck uh, from Alan Missenheimer's agency did 68. And then Tony Gill came in at a, Nice 78, and of course, Alan leading the way with his agency at 80. And then Alan also had uh, you know, a part of his agency and he's got more than this. I couldn't put them all up here. And I wanted to recognize uh, Linda Letterman as being the top Charlotte uh, region uh, uh, agent for us. I came in at 112. So I just wanna say thank you uh, from the bottom of my heart for your partnership with us. And again, I could put a lot more Messer agents right below this, uh, but I just want to recognize these top agents and say thank you. All right, so with that being said, let's kind of jump into the, the presentation. <clears throat> so during this time, it's obviously about staying focused on growth and obviously we're in very, uh, very unique time right now with uh, probably prospecting and uh, you know having to stay at home, not being able to meet face to face, which you know, um, you know, some of you probably are adapting quicker than others. I've always been a face-to-face -face guy. I, I really enjoy that. I love to meet with people in their homes and get to know them and see them face-to-face. -face and and you know, but right now the, that's a little harder to do. And uh, I know still some of y'all are doing that, and it's with the agreement of you know the the uh, the client, which is fine. And I'm sure you're taking all precautions and wearing masks when need be, or if they're asking you to do that. But nevertheless, we do gotta stay focused on growth. And as you know, during <clears throat> AEP, it's a very short eight week window or less that you can do the biggest part of your enrollments. Uh, but what a lot of us, uh, what a lot of agents do is sometimes they don't have a game plan for what they're gonna do the rest of the year. So it's important to you know stay focused, stay locked in and, uh, you know, during this lock-in, it's a great opportunity, obviously, to retain the clients that you earn during AEP, <clears throat> but it's also a great opportunity to sell year-round. And there's no better product, in my opinion, uh, or one of the better products that are out there is the Total Care HMO Dual SNP Plan, and it offers you a great opportunity uh, to be able to sell year-round. Talking about selling year round, we do want to address this real quick. In 2019, uh, the election periods were changed for duels and for partial eligibles. Um, no longer could you do a continuous month, month in, month out, you know, uh, plan change. So they, they changed that. CMS did, and then uh, we now have a one-time special special election uh, per quarter. So that could obviously be from January to March, which we just got through. Now we're into April, second quarter, April to June, and then July to September. And then in the fourth quarter, we turned back into AEP. And so we use that as our election period uh, during that time frame of the fourth quarter. All right, let's talk a little bit about eligibility. How, how do you find, or what are some of the requirements for people to be on this total care HMO dual SNP plan. So let's kind of get into that. I want to give you a nice little chart here. I think you'll you'll like this. And if some of you want this chart, uh, Brian, I can you know get this part of the presentation. I can't do the whole thing to you, but I can get some of these clips and, and get these to you. But this is a nice little chart that gives you an idea <clears throat> of who would be eligible for this total care plan. So let's just talk about this real quick. 
Up top here, you see the QMBs. These are your full Medicaid eligibles. And what's nice about this chart is kind of gives you an idea of what an individual income would be and a married couple would be for, you know, to possibly qualify as a QMB. Well, obviously those are the full Medicaid. I'm not really gonna spend a whole lot of time on them because that's kind of a given. <clears throat> it's these right here that I wanna talk about. These are your slim Bs or your QIs, and you can again see the income limits. But the key here is that their Part B Medicare is being paid for, okay? So this is really key when we talk about partial Medicaid in the state of North Carolina, uh, because if, if that's happening, uh, maybe they don't qualify for the QMB, but they are a slim B and QI, they would definitely qualify as a partial and would be allowed to come on the, to the total care plan. So this is really what makes it unique and kind of you, you can <clears throat> really target some <clears throat> low income, uh, maybe that aren't full duels, but uh, that, you know, obviously would be in this category. All right, so where do you find you know, these duels, right? Well, I believe they're everywhere, but here's some a list and some of you could probably add to this list. Uh, so there's just a lot of different areas that <clears throat> you can go to. I mentioned earlier that when I built a, a nice book of business in Pennsylvania, uh, I did a lot of food pantries and food banks, and I did some senior high-rise buildings with bingo, and I've really focused on the, um, like I said, some of the uh, areas in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and I built um, a really nice book, and, and like I said, did most of that through grassroots efforts. What about working with duels? You know, sometimes I hear folks say, hey, you know, this is a, this is a needy population. I, I wanna encourage you that when I worked with these folks, I really believed that this is what I came away with. These were, <clears throat> these were salt of the earth people. They were the disabled, the underserved, um, the low incomes. Sometimes there's people in isolation. I really found it to be from a humanitarian you know, uh, point of view, very rewarding to be able to help people in those situations. And so I think this goes not just for duels, obviously, but you gotta be willing to help, be willing to educate, help them access care. You know, and sometimes you might do a little more three-way calls with them, you know, to customer service. You gotta build trust. You obviously have to be compassionate and you have to be willing to follow up. Follow up. You know, these are all things that you probably are already doing. Um, and that's what makes a good agent. I want to talk to talk to you a little bit about building trust. You know, when I first uh, started building my book of business and going to these food pantries, you know, I remember um, setting up my table. I had a, a tablecloth. I had a, a large Medicare, a blown up Medicare card, generic Medicare card. And then I had the, uh, in the state of Pennsylvania, I had the, the state Medicaid card. And I had it, you know, right there on my table. And I would always set up try to set up, you know, um, close to where the line would be before they go into the food pantry. And then for me, I, um, I thought, well, I'm gonna kind of be a little bit different and I brought candy and, uh, but specifically I brought root beer barrels. And, and then every once in a while I'd bring Twizzlers. Obviously I lived in Pennsylvania, so I was real close to Hershey. But um, with that being said, I became known as the candy man. But I wanna tell you about trust in the beginning, I remember sitting at these food pantries and obviously you get people looking at you and I believe there's kind of that invisible wall. And uh, over time, I just had to be consistent uh, week in and week out so that they could get familiar with me and, and know that I was gonna be there, you know, week in and week out and it's somebody that, that they could trust. And then over time, people started coming to me and I started making, you know, I don't remember not making a sale at any of these food pantries, so it was, it was pretty exciting, um, or at least it led into a sale or referral. So good point just about being, you know, uh, trustworthy, and I think that the mess is there is you got to be consistent. So let's talk about the process. So there is a step-by-step -step process, and we're kind of going to now really zero in on, on these partial Medicaid eligibles. Because uh, as far as I know, we're one of the only plans in our 17 counties that we're in 
<clears throat> that offer a plan not only for the full dual but for the partial. For, so for the sake of this presentation, we're going to really talk about finding the partial Medicaid because uh, there is a process to it, and I want to train you on how to do that. So the first question that you need to have answered is your potential prospect here in front of you. We'll call her Betty. Is Betty's uh, Part B Medicare being paid for by the state? So that's the first thing you have to determine because either she's a, you know, she could be a QMB, obviously, but she could be a Slim B or a QI. But again, for the sake of this presentation, let's just say she says, I, you know, I don't have Medicaid. You know, you've asked a lot of questions. You might even ask if you have the gray card. She says, no, I don't have Medicaid. Um, then I wouldn't give up there. Because remember, a lot of these people uh, who don't have full Medicaid, there's a good chance if they're low income that they have partial Medicaid. But they don't even know it. So this is where you have to be a little, uh, you have to be good at asking questions and pulling that information out and doing a little bit of digging. Uh, so obviously if they have their Part B uh, Medicaid being paid for by the state, remember, like I said, they do not have a gray card. So that makes it a little more challenging because now you know, you're gonna have to find the nine digit number and Obviously, if they don't have a gray card, that can be a little challenging. So you've got to get the nine-digit number. So this is this is the part where you got to kind of get um, creative, and I'll give you a couple suggestions here on how to do that. You could try calling the local county assistance office. Maybe this person has had a caseworker in the past. I've known some agents to actually drive the client, which is harder to do today in, the, in our environment, given the COVID-19, but I've known people to drive them right to the local county assistance office and get the, the nine digit number. You could retrieve it if they have their Department of Social Services letter that they received. This is probably, um, the, if they have it, that's an easy way to get it. But as you know, not everybody's gonna have that and probably a low percentage of them realize they even have partial Medicaid. Another way is to call the 800 number for the Department of Social Services and get a live person. So in doing this, uh, I had an agent share with me last year that he is able to get to a live person every time and he has a step-by-step -step process of how he does that. I personally tried it. Um, now, I, I obviously didn't have a client, but I got all the way to the live person. I have, a, have a, other agents who have tried it and they too have gotten to the live person. So Brian, here's what I'll, I'll do. Um, I can send you an email with this 800 number and there's a five-step process of how to get to a live person. And the great news is they're very eager to help your member. And I would great. suggest doing it on a, uh, I would suggest doing it on a three-way call. After all that's done, you've got the, the, the Medicaid number and you're feeling really good that this person would qualify for the dual SNP plan. My encouragement would be, you don't, you don't have to do this, but my encouragement would be to call Carl and just to verify their eligibility, just so that you've checked off your box to say, yep, I've called Carl, which is, Carl is our Signet agent resource line. You can call them. Uh, and the nice thing about it is Carl's going to also give you their L LIS copay level, not only their LIS, but also their copay level, which I want to, I have another slide coming up about that. I think you'll like it. So that's the number to call Carl. This is a, this is a phone number you should have in your speed dial anyway, because Carl can be a, a great assistance to you, uh, especially like right now, if you're trying to get a hold of me, I'm, I'm doing three of these, uh, all, all day today or different times today, it may be hard to get a hold of me, but Carl can be a great resource for you. Obviously complete the application fully and accurately. You know, I, again, I was an agent for many years and I'll be honest with you, sometimes I would, I would fill out applications really fast. And then inevitably if, when I did that, I'd leave something out and then it would cause a delay in the application. Um, so I did a comment, you know, obviously I did Medicare, I did final expense. So I really got good about double and triple checking. In fact, I even got my wife 
if involved at times, I'd say, hey, look, you know, two eyes are better than one. I've probably missed something. Can you, you know, go through these applications and make sure, you know, uh, that everything is done accurately? So that that's good. Accurately, legibly, you know, that's that's really important. And as you know, CMS now requires that all enrollment forms, uh, you need to have uh, the Medicare uh, ID number, uh, the Medicare, you know, MBI number. So, and also I want to add something to this, kind of another layer to this. If you're doing one of these applications, maybe off to the side or maybe in your notes, I think it would be good for you to get the social security number. And the reason I say that is I do see some of these, I get CC'd in on some of the, uh, the RFIs, they're called requests for information. And I do see sometimes where they need to verify the Medicaid number again, or they, they can't verify the Medicaid number. And it seems to me that kind of the hang up there or the, uh, is the, the actual social security number. So if you'll keep that off to the side, and if you, if you do get an RFI, you'll know to, you know, obviously supply the, the Medicaid number again, which could be the same one you put on the app and then supply the, the, the social security number. Seems like when those two things are matched up, it makes the verification go a lot easier. It's just a little tip there. All right, let's get into the summary of benefits. So now you're gonna be, you know, you know that this person is gonna be able to go onto the plan. Um, I wanna just point out to you a look, some few things about the summary of benefits that I think are important. One of the first things, which is on page 22 of your sales kit uh, in the total care book is, is the premium. And so when, when a client sees zero or 2640, you've got to be able to explain that. Obviously the zero is going to be for the, um, the total full or the full dual, they get at zero premium, but you might be wondering, well, what is this 2640 about? So let me share this with you. That 2640 is all drug premium. Okay. So their, your client's monthly premium is gonna be based upon their LIS level. And here's what I wanna encourage you. Most everybody that you run into, probably 99% of the people that have Part B Medicare or they're being paid for and they're considered a partial Medicaid, they're also gonna be 100% LIS. Now you might run into an oddball that's 75%, well, you know that the premium you know, obviously it would be $6 and 60 cents and then so on. I, again, I, I put these here for illustrative purposes. You, you know, obviously you may or may not run into any of these, but, or any of these below here, the majority, like I said, you're going to run into these here. Okay. All right. Let's continue on with the summary of benefits. On page 22 with the partial, you're definitely going to let them know that there is a $6,700 out-of-pocket max. I always let people know that, hey, that's that's a, not a deductible. That's just adding up the co-pays here and there. And if they, obviously, if that person has a, a tough year, that that's the limit that they would pay. So I'm sure, trust that many of you know how to explain that. So let's talk about explaining some of the benefits. And this is on page 23 of the sales kit. So inpatient hospitalization, zero or 195. Well, how, how do you explain that to your client? Remember this, I'll just say, that, to keep it real simple. Zero is going to be for the, the full dual and anything after the or, which in this case, it's 195 is for the partial. Okay, so as you go through your summary of benefits, whenever you see zero or a copay or a percentage, so that's what you want to get good at explaining, but it, it's very simple. As you go through the, the benefits, uh, you'll see this or this. Anytime there's an or, you know that that's what the, the, the partial is going to pay. Some people will ask me, well, there's, is there anything to, in between dependent upon their level? No, they're, they're either full dual or they're partial. It's, there's nothing in between. There's no sliding scale. There's no guessing game. Um, doctor visits, page 23. This is kind of a neat benefit. Zero copay for primary care and zero copay for specialist. There is no or in this category here. So think about it. You got a person who's on a regular HMO plan, a regular PPO plan, and they're paying a 
specialist copay and maybe they're going there once a month, twice a month, maybe eight times a year at 35 bucks a pop or 40 bucks a pop. And now you can take them to this plan where they have a zero specialist copay. Um, I did this a couple of times in North Carolina before I came to Cigna and people were thrilled and you become a big hero in their life and you could put you know, money back into their pocket. Some of these uh, are some more benefits here. Again, remember I told you, you know, zero for lab services, but here you have x-rays is zero or 20%. So, you know, just, just be aware of how to, how to explain that to the client. Again, the 20% is gonna be for the partial. Rehab services. So this is pretty cool benefit here. All the rehab services are at a zero copay for both the full and the partial. Let's talk about some of the extra benefits. We do have a hearing benefit. It's through Hearing Care Solutions. You can find that information on page 24. And it does cover, um, uh, the coverage amount is $700 per year, per device every three years. And again, that's through Hearing Care Solutions. You have to go through hearingcaresolutions.com to be able to find uh, a provider for the routine hearing. Of course, everybody's probably familiar with our new dental allowance. Um, in fact, I'm doing a, a webinar every day at 1 p.m. about this, just going into more details. Uh, there's some, this is a great plan, but there's some things you, you have to be able to explain to your members uh, just for your sake and their sake for sure. Vision is through Superior Vision, uh, $200 a year. Let me encourage you with this. Um, it is through Superior Vision. That's our vendor. So you do have to go to superiorvision.com to be able to find uh, these vision providers. And those uh, obviously will line up here with this benefit. A little bit more extras we're talking about. Silver, our fitness program is through Silver and Fit. Obviously, is a zero cost to the member. Transportation, we use access to care. They get 24 one-way trips. Our OTC got bumped up from $90 a quarter to $375. It does have a rollover feature. So they, uh, they can basically get $1,500 by the end of the year. And as long as, they, um, as long as they spend that by December 31st of this year, they can uh, have a very nice benefit. And they can do that through catalog order, ordering or online. This is the, remember earlier I was explaining to you when you call Carl, they can give you an LIS copay level breakdown. I think this is a nice little chart. And again, Brian, I can get this to you and, and so you can get it out to the team. But I think this is a really cool chart. You know, a lot of times when you're sitting down with folks, you may not know exactly what copay they play, no, what copay level they are at. So here's what I mean by that. You already know that they're 100% LIS. Like I said, most of the time they are. So when you call into Carl or you've already confirmed that they have 100% LIS, extra help, but you, what you don't know is you don't know exactly what level of copay they're at or L, what I call LIS level. So again, remember this, is, this chart is based upon someone already being 100% LIS. You're just gonna really narrow it down to what their copay level is. Now, a lot of people are at this level one, right? You probably see this a lot, 360 for generic, 895 for brand. Uh, maybe if they're even lower income, you could even see the $1.30 or 390 for brand. And every once in a while, you're gonna run into those who are level three and they're not paying anything for their medication. So this is a nice little chart for you to, to have in your tool bag and you can be real precise and uh, be the subject matter expert and show them exactly you know, what their copay levels would be. All right, so we're about to wrap this up. So <clears throat> what's my encouragement? Obviously target beneficiaries with SEPs during lock-in to increase your production. And obviously we're talking about finding these partial duels or partial, yeah, partial Medicaid. <laughs> Yeah, partial duels, I guess. Uh, take advantage of the opportunity for year-round selling, uh, you know, obviously with our total care needs plan.
As you offer these plans, your prospects obviously go above and beyond the regular features and benefits. Remember, you're the difference maker. You don't just sell the plan and our brand, but you sell yourself too. So with that, we'll go into some questions here. Brian, I'm All ready, right, Robert. buddy. <laughs> Robert, thanks for uh, going through that today. Um, just a lot of really great uh, information. Um, just a few questions that, that did come up. The, the first one was, because you were talking about Carl, uh, can you give the number to Carl again? Sure. The number is, I can go back to the slide. Let's do that. Okay. And just sit back through there. Bear with me. Oh, there it is. 866-446-5500. And Carl Great. can help you, help you out with a lot of things. Okay, and you were saying that uh, that you're gonna forward some additional steps to get us through to a live person? Yes, I do have that. Yep, I can, okay. I'll definitely get that on to you. Wonderful, I know a lot of people will probably want that. Um, the next question is, is there a telemedicine option for clients? Yes. Yep, there is a definitely telemed or what is that? Yeah, telemed, right. And it just, yes. Yes, so there is that option, yep. Okay, and Tracy asks, can clients be enrolled online? We do have, okay, we do have an online platform. Uh, it's through, um, it's our e-app. It's not an app, actually. It's actually, you, you you log in and you register. So the, the tough thing about it during COVID-19 is that we require you to be face-to-face -face with a customer and get a signature. Now, if a client's okay to do that, then by all means, you can definitely do the electronic enrollment for sure. The way you find that, just so you know, um, if you have, if you're contracted with us and um, you've set up your Salesforce profile or you registered, there's um, there's something called some key features. In fact, uh, let me let me see if I can do this real quick. Hold on, give me a second. Okay. Give it, this is a little, see if I can do a little, I won't do a live demo, but I'll show you where to find this. I think it's great. This is, that way we can get people more comfortable uh, with Salesforce. Sure. I realize there, you know, you probably gotten an email lately. There's some, there's some things we're working through with Salesforce. There's, you know, when you take one system and you try to migrate all the data over there's going to be glitches. So we've definitely had our share, uh, but yeah. we're definitely working through them. It's but normally this, a lot of fun. No, yeah. <laughs> so this right, this right here is my, this is my homepage. Now yours probably, you know, my landing page for Salesforce. You're probably, yours probably may look different than mine. Um, obviously I work for the company, but this is, but all of you will have this here. This is called useful links. And it's a great place because it, it houses all the things you're going to need to be able to do business with us. So this one here, like I said, is the, you click on that and that just brings you to the Cigna website. Uh, you click on this, this is custom point. This is where you order your kits. You log in and order your kits there. Uh, you just asked about e-enrollment. So there's your e-enrollment platform. You'd have to register first, but it takes, I think it takes a minute to register and then you're ready to go. In fact, you can actually do uh, an e-scope. Uh, you'll see once you get beyond this, how to do an e-scope. Uh, and then of course your online provider directory. This is where you uh, can look up doctors. This is, I'll tell you, this is a little, this is a little quirky. Once you get used to it, you, you know how to use it, but we're, we're trying to get better with this. Um, many of you have used it you know, the back button, you know, you basically have to start over anytime you push the back button. So we're trying to, to fix that as we move forward. And then of course, producer university, this is where you log in with your NPN number and you have a, a password and this gets you into uh, where you do all your certifications, but it's also gets you into the resource library, which gets you a lot of 
lots of information, evidence of coverage for all the plans, summary of benefits for all the plans, enrollment forms, just gobs of, of great information. Any more questions? So, yeah, a few more questions. Um, Sharon asked, can you go over the scope process? Go over the scope process. Um, I'm not sure what she means by that. I mean, well, I'll just, I can tell you this is that you can, um, you can go, let's see, I'm just trying to think. I mean, I, obviously I know the scope process, but I'm trying to think mm -hmm. the best way to explain it is that there's multiple ways to do it. Obviously there's the paper scope. Um, there is the, you can do the e-scope I just described through the e-enrollment tool or with us, you can also do a telescope. Um, and that is by calling an 800 number and doing a three-way call with your client and doing it that way. Another thing I will tell you is that, you know, somebody asked me the other day, Robert, if, if I email a client a generic scope and it, they're using DocuSign, can I use that scope? Absolutely. Uh, we'll take that scope. We'll take competitor scopes. It, it really doesn't matter to us as long as you, you've sent in the scope. So that's important with us. I will say that, Brian. We do, even though I think CMS doesn't require you to send in your scope to us any longer, just realize with us, we, from our compliance department, we still require it. So if you're okay. going to do business with us, just make sure that you go ahead and, you know, obviously I know you're already doing the scope, but make sure you send it in as well. Yeah, she said she, she's been having trouble capturing the, the signature. Okay, if she wants to maybe reach out to me individually, maybe I can help okay. her do that. All right, definitely. Um, and Trisha says, regarding Salesforce, are we solely using this now, or are we still using Cigna HealthSpringProducers.com also, or Cigna for Brokers.com? Just Cigna for Brokers.com. Yeah, everything. Yeah, the old e-agent where you could look up apps, that's, you can't get in there anymore or hopefully you can't. <laughs> so everything is migrated yeah. over to Salesforce. Yeah, so you definitely want to, um, you know, if you haven't already done so, you know, maybe if you're home more often than you want to be right now, this would be a good time to to get your Salesforce set up. And that's the Cigna for brokers, you know, dot com. So, and if, unfortunately, I don't, I, I don't know how to do the onboarding part of that. Um, so that's a Carl, um, you know, function. So Carl can, if you're having trouble getting logged in, which mm -hmm. some people have definitely had, then you want to call Carl and they can help, you know, get that set up for you. Okay, thank you for that. And Tiffany, just to let you know, this is being recorded um, and it will be available on MesserFinancial.com and through our learning center. Um, normally it takes about 24 to 48 hours to appear there. Um, last question here, um, will Cigna help with marketing uh, like banners. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right now. That's a great question. I, whoever that is, I'd love to, you know, link up with you, reach out to me because I have a bunch of them in my, in my garage <laughs> right now. <laughs> so okay. yeah, absolutely. We have a lot of different banners, um, a lot of different marketing items. Absolutely. Yes. Reach out to me. My, my, I'll give you my phone number. My cell number is 704 984 1046. Or if you want to email me, it's robert.lawson, L-A-W-S-O-N, at Cigna.com. So that's robert.lawson at Cigna.com. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'd love to, I'd love to get rid, not get rid of it, but I'd love to <laughs> let you all have it. It doesn't do me any good by having it stacked in my garage. Yeah, so, um, just, and one more question here. Um, sure. It says feedback commission statements received by email are extremely small. Any way that, uh, is there any way to correct this? Yeah, that's more of a commissions question. Um, okay. Why don't you deal with me offline on that? And then yeah. we can we can address that. But if, if I Absolutely. can definitely, I love, I love the, the feedback. Email me and I'll be glad to send that to commissions. Absolutely. All right. Robert, before we wrap up here, um, is there anything that you that you want to say to the agents that are that are on with us? 
Well, I, I first of all, just want to thank you for your partnership, for sure. Uh, Messer Financial has been a tremendous partner and just always a leader, you know, in, in the area, obviously in North Carolina, South Carolina, and many parts of the country, but obviously me personally right here in North Carolina. And, and I've I developed some great uh, friendships over the time and, and a lot of them are from Messer. And I, I truly do thank you, you know, for your professionalism and thank you for, you know, I'll be, you know, obviously we're, we're one of the smaller guys compared to some of the, the, you know, bigger companies. So we're going through, you know, I'll be out transparent with you. We're going through some growing pains right now and in a lot of different areas. And, you know, this COVID-19 probably exposed us a little more. I'm not afraid to tell you that, but I I do, you know, I'm, a, here's the privilege that you don't have. I'm on the, the, the calls with the leadership, the high up leaders, and I hear their passion and I, and they, they're very transparent and they recognize that we have some gaps and uh, in some of our tools and some of our, you know, systems and things. And, and, and I recognize them and it, believe me, nobody's more frustrated than me with certain things that, that I wish we could fix right now. And uh, so just be patient, you know, with us. Um, yeah. I, that's all I can say as we continue to grow, but thank you. Thank you for doing business with us. Thank you for being a great partner overall. Um, yeah, it, it's just been a great partnership. Thank you, Brian. Excellent. Excellent. No, thank you, Robert. I appreciate your, your transparency there. Um, once again, we want to thank all of you for taking time out of your day and joining us. Hopefully, you did learn something that's going to help you in your business. Um, Robert went over just a few things about how to continue to do business right from where you are, and but also um, how to, as far as total care, how that's going to benefit your clients and also yourself. If you're not currently contracted with Cigna, go to C, uh, your Shirelsi profile and request the appointment. If you're not contracted with Messer and you have questions about partnering with Messer Financial, uh, feel free to contact our marketing department at 866-568-9649, extension 7813, or email at uh, mfgmarketing at messerfinancial.com, and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you do have about the advantages of partnering with Messer. Uh, also take a few minutes to check out our events calendar at messerfinancial.com. We'll be having webinar workshops scheduled throughout the year with valuable information just like Robert shared with us. But once again, thank you all so much for joining us. Take care of yourselves and everyone around you.